Welcome back once more. This is Sunday edition here on KTN News. We are keeping an eye on the ODM party nominations across the county, number 047, the county of Nairobi. Our reporters are spread across the breadth of this county to bring the law down the latest. Right now, it is voting that is currently underway in most of the polling stations, and we have our crews spread across this county. And we have been the pioneers of technology on Kenyan television, and we are the first television channel to use uh, video phones to uh, broadcast live from location. And one of those locations we are is Embakasi South, where our own Akisa Wandera is monitoring the voting process, the nomination of the ODM party in Imaradaima. She now joins us uh, to tell us what's happening. Akisa, if you can hear me where you are in Imaradaima in Embakasi South, uh, just bring us up to speed over the voting process there. Right, we are trying to correct the audio, Akisa's audio there, and we shall be going back to her in Imara Daima in Mbakasi South uh, to tell us, for her to tell us uh, how the voting process is faring there. And of course, uh, in other parts of Nairobi County, we have been talking about the nominations across the political parties. I want us to get now into some of the big names that, have, that seem to have fallen and what really happened. They are very quickly just sample some of them. Uh, if we can start, uh, where do we start? Let's start in Kiambu County, a county that has close to one million vo registered voters. You say yeah. it is very abnormal for sure, it is. a candidate to get 300,000 votes, but that's mm -hmm. just 30 yeah, percent. Yeah, what is abnormal of, about that? Uh, yes. I think uh, I, I said this because of the, as much as they have a bigger population compared to others, uh, we ought to have seen uh, the numbers, uh, especially because this is a nomination process, uh, not being that high. And uh, the, the, the high population of turnout, I think it has something to do with how the population there is actually helped to ensure that they maintain status quo in terms of power. And I talked to, when I talked to Dismas about uh, why, NAS, why Jubilee stands out to, you know, make more votes uh, come August, it's because of uh, the issue we call power. When people have power, it's not easy to relinquish the same. And uh, to be relinquished it. <laughs> well, there were oh, you could ha you could and hear Dr. there were some Dr. forces. Dr. There were some forces that did not right. want him to uh -huh. be where he okay, is. Okay, let me ask this: Why sure. did Kabogo lose? According to you, I think Kabogo brushed the electorate in the wrong in the wrong way. You could hear there were some uh, sort of uh, statements that he had insulted women by telling them that they will panga them like matiti or umbo something like that. Th that did not go well. Did not all go well with the electorate, and uh, he saw his is uh, is a, a fate being sealed even before because the the time that he declared he considered defeat, he had uh, only twelve thousand votes had already been counted. Uh, uh, Waititu was already leading by 10,000. Kabogo had only two. And you could imagine a projection of from 10 to 300,000. How could he foresee this coming at such an early All right. stage All right. of the process? <laughs> mm. uh, Waititu has been having so many problems. Did you see this coming? Uh, I didn't see this coming. I was very sure that Kabogo was going to win. I mean, you look at Kabogo and the way he articulated his candidature. You're seeing a governor who knew where he was going. We've never seen Waititu anywhere, and that's why I think, in as much as Kabogo lost because people didn't want Kabogo, ultimately, that is what I established, and guys went out to vote Kabogo home. My problem is, do they know who they were voting in? Because <laughs> uh, I've never listened to Waititu talk about Kiambu issues. He has never articulated. He was afraid of facing Kabogo in, in, in debates and so on and so forth. And I think that is a tragedy of some of these uh, large voter turnout, that guys are turning out to vote people out without any recourse to who they are voting in. You ask yourself, now, on what basis was Kabogo sent home uh, if we divorce, uh, you know, the, 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 issue the, the, the election insult. from the issues of, you know, treating uh, uh, the electorate with condescending attitude and stuff like that? Did he deliver? 
and are they moving from somebody who didn't deliver to somebody who can deliver? I don't think they thought about that. This must well, you know, when you look at uh, Kavuga, is, Kavuga is said to be rich and powerful, intelligent, mm -hmm. and he's got a solid uh, network within uh, Kiambu. And uh, when, when you speak to the voters in Kiambu, they give you two reasons. Mm -hmm. Number one, they was a bit uh, condescending. But they did not mind a condescending leader who delivers. It's actually after the opinion polls indicated he was going to lose that he started making public so many things that he's done. And people were surprised. So there's that issue. And then, of course, there's the issue of where to locate the capital city, or rather the headquarters of uh, Kiambu yeah. County. But more important, the reason why he went home, and this is an issue that people would like to tiptoe because of uh, lack of uh, facts, is that he stepped on powerful toes. On uh, live TV, when he indicated that he's conceding, he said that some powerful people who did not want him in office, but he did not now go the extra mile to name the names. He, he didn't mm -hmm. do that. So I guess he wants us uh, to keep on uh, speculating. Now, the reason why NASA shouldn't be worried about the voter <laughs> turnout is because for central Kenya, mm -hmm. it's, it's the saturation point. Mm. In, in fact, one would have expected that the voter turnout would even be 70% during the party primaries. It was only 30%. And when you look at the numbers, it's in fact the candidate for the women rape who got about 300,000 votes. The rest votes are much lower. Again, meaning probably that uh, the voters in Kiambu place a huge premium on the women representation. Mm -hmm. Now, going by your assertion, Brian, also in Nairobi, we would have expected a higher voter turnout, but on average it was 10%, uh, which brings us to this myth about Sonko, that Sonko has got numbers. If indeed, All during right. the last election, he got 800,000 votes, yeah. how come during these uh, party primaries, he did not even get 50% uh, of the 800,000? Uh, uh, let's talk about question. Nairobi. Now that you bring, <laughs> let's talk about Nairobi and yes. the Jubilee primaries. Let me start with you, Brian. Yes. Um, Peter Kenneth has been fronted. Many people, was, many political mm. analysts mm. were saying that... Uh, the, poli the establishment of Jubilee wanted mm -hmm. Peter Kenneth. Sure. Um, Mike Sonko, the senator, beat him hands down. Did you see this coming? And why do you think this vote went out like the way it did? And that's why the issue of impos imposition of a leader actually did not work out for PK and the company and those who were of his favor. And the reason why, you know, he lost is because uh, as the moment the people got wind, uh, that the uh, executive and all the powers that revolve around were for PK. I think the, the population and the citizens were of the opinion that they do, this is the not time that they would want to have a leader imposed unto them. And you could remember the president uh, at, some, at some point uh, telling Kenyans to pray for PK. That was a clear indication that his heart was for PK. And that did not go well with the people. As much as Sonko was deemed, seems to, uh, seemed to look a little bit irrational in terms of decision making, his inability to articulate issues and his code of conduct in terms of uh, previous record. I think they, they felt he was a better better candidate in the sense that he was uh, able to endear himself to the people. Sonko is somebody who was able to, to, to endear his record actually speaks for himself. And uh, so you could see some messages running through the social media saying uh, when, uh, when, um, when Nairobi, when the doctors were on strike Songo went to the, to the rescue of some parents. Where was PK? When there was issues of floods, uh, Songo was on he rescue identifies team. With the people. He identifies with the people. And there was a documentary <laughs> that he did uh, actually the night before the election, the eve of the nomination. That uh, was actually, I think, KTN also had a, a, a share of it. K24 had a piece of it. And it, it articulated on the issues that he has actually done to the common manage. And that seemed to have really worked for him come the day of the elections, actually. Husband, why do you think this happened the way it did? And where does this leave the battle between Sonko mm. and, and the incumbent governor? Now, there? I think I agree with Brian that the moment you are associated with the establishment, uh, there is a way in which people look at the other party as the victim, and therefore they would want to identify and support the victim. And uh, I mean, Sonko is very popular, of course, popular with the common monarchy outside there, and he has done a lot for them. But it's unfortunate that if you look at the grand scale of uh, things, you realize that the people who go voting at the primaries. Uh, have very little knowledge, you know, on what Rocious. really they're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I tip Kidero to beat Sonko. Because the bulk of the guys who went and voted, them they know they're voting a representative, somebody who will fight for them, somebody who will make laws for them. And that is far from the truth, because a governor is essentially an executive. He has mm. no powers to represent anyone. And of course, the things that Sonko has done, I applaud Sonko for, you know, coming in and being responsive to the plight of the poor. But you see, it is in good leadership that we have these things sorted, not in responding to individual <laughs> cases. This is, and in, 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 and this is the tragedy of most of uh, 
the places where the voter turnout was low, that we entrusted uh, the choices that we are going to make on 8th of August to a few individuals who may not even have enough knowledge. Because come 8th of August, we'll be forced to pick between Sonko and Kidero, yet we were not involved in the primaries. So that if there was anyone who was better than Sonko, we didn't give them a chance, simply because we never went to vote. We have the knowledge. It will amount to nothing. But having said that, I think uh, PK exposed his, 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 his uh, candidature quite so well. And even from everything that he said, you realize that this is a man who didn't know what he was doing. Totally. <laughs> He was not in touch with the reality. He didn't know who, who he was competing because I think he was talking to an elite that does not participate in the primary. So from the word go, he was going to lose. All right. Same, then same, I... same script, different cast like what happened in 2013? Same yeah. script, different cast. <laughs> you, know, you don't, you don't <laughs> believe Sonko years. has numbers. Well, uh, you know, anybody who is telling you that Sonko has got numbers, that's a fallacy. A fallacy, oh, no. you know, the biggest fallacy in the world. I mean, but Sonko <laughs> got 800,000 votes. Sure. Uh, the the, 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 the third largest. No, the yeah, yes, the third about, highest about largest. 600, Actually, mm. the difference was about, uh, about 163,000 votes, mm. meaning, mm. and you know we've repeated these times above number, maybe mm. for the benefit of the audience, that everybody who voted for Kibaki voted for, sorry, who voted for mm. Kenyatta voted for Sonko, and the converse is not the case. So mm. effectively, Sonko has got about 163,000 votes. Mm. And that probably approximates the votes that he got during the party primaries. Mm -hmm. It's very surprising that a young legislator by the name of Sakaja got a higher number of votes than Sonko. And Sonko is said to enjoy overwhelming political capital mm. and influence in the city, which I think is yeah, a... But it was, the same but to be fair to, to him, mm. it was, what was the voter turnout? This city has close to 2 million registered voters. Mm -hmm. It was no, 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 no. But Ben, no people, people say, and it was a, it was a political party primary, not a general yeah, election. Yeah, but the people say that the guy Sonko represents number one, they don't work, so they are idle the entire day. <laughs> what would have limited those people to go and uh, cast their ballots? And then we must run away from this notion that. But he won, uh, didn't yeah, yeah, he? He won. He won, yeah. But but the, the margin is uh, crazy. <laughs> but and we must run away from the notion uh. that uh, as a nation we are supposed to be beneficiaries of uh, the leaders, largesse or philanthropy, because. Sonko, if you go to the Senate right now and you go through the Hansard and you start looking for his uh, contribution, you yeah. will spend an entire day and you will come up with uh, nothing. He's done nothing that uh, is shocking to the nation. And then, of course, there are Chapter 6 issues, integrity issues that uh, he's uh, accused of, that is not uh, sorted out. And I think those are some of the issues that mm. Akidero is very happy to I, explain I want to give a... go to the general election. Mm. Let me clear that point. Like, for instance, <laughs> uh. Sonko has got this facility that uh, if you come from the countryside and you lose your relative in Nairobi, mm. he will probably assist you with a house and you know you go and mm. perform your rights back in the village. Mm. But what Sonko is supposed to do and uh, his other colleagues, both in the Senate and the National Assembly, is to create an environment for business to thrive so that if any Kenyan, you, you lose a family member, mm. you do not need to go looking for a politician. Let me you say can something. go to the funeral home or you can go to wherever it is and you are able to take care of your issues. Okay. When, you are, when there is a flood in uh, Nairobi, it's not up to the local leaders to come with uh, food in packets. We are supposed to have a, a structured emergency response from the county government of Nairobi to <coughs> come out and solve these issues. What if there's a fire or a flood in uh, Nairobi and that time Sonko is abroad attending a meeting? Mm. What Son all Sonko supporters did? would tell you, I'm being the devil's advocate here, mm. Sonko would, would tell you that he doesn't have the executive power oh, exactly. to come to Nairobi. Exactly. So he's just trying to give an example of to what he would the do. Uh, uh, let me say something, Ben. I think you have given him a lot of Let me say something, Ben. I'm thinking it's upside down, Ben. Sonko is a member of parliament, he sits at the Senate, he can come up with a piece right. of legislation. Exactly. All right. For instance, mm -hmm. Sakaja came up with a piece of legislation which is upside down, which is supposed to force <laughs> governments, or rather, to force the private Hes sector Hesmond, what do you think about to this? offer people employment uh, opportunities. Okay, okay, yeah. fair yeah. enough. Let me what think about this? The first thing I would say is, Sonko is big. I think uh, this month is trying to bring Sonko a little bit down. I appreciate the fact that Sonko is a politician who knows what he does. He appreciates the fact that if you're with the people, you have the numbers. To that extent, I think uh, Kidero is a worried man, that Sonko has the people. Yeah. Now, and, and I think uh, the biggest thing for Sonko as we sit now is to get a running mate who will probably, you know, bring some sort of executive stature in, 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 in the ticket. Right. Because as, 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 as you know, the first thing about a politician is winning, not what you're bringing on the table. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could be a Kidero, an executive, a doctor, but if you don't get those votes, 
then there's nothing you're going to do. Brian, I want you to tell me, uh, mm -hmm. he says Sonko has the numbers. I sure. want you to tell me, I want us to talk to Trix and Gado first, but after that, I want you to tell me if um, Sonko, does Sonko have, has the middle class? I don't know if there's something like a middle class sure. as a voting block, Absolutely. but the, the middle class mm. seem to not trust him, mm. but do they have the power to deny him that, uh, that uh, seat at uh, the... At, at, the, at the city hall. Let's, 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 let's cross live very quickly to uh, Kamokunji constituency where our Trix Ngado uh, has been following uh, the voting process there. Uh, Trix, good afternoon. And uh, what's happening there? Uh, good afternoon, Ben. So we are here at Shauri Moyo in the uh, social hall. We've, if, for those viewers who are watching since morning, we are here at around 7. There was no activity. The hall was empty. The ballot boxes and papers weren't here. So I made a, a, I've made a, a, a full circle. I've gone around, come back to this area, and at last there's a, some activity. The queue is absolutely long, as, as you can see, over my shoulder. And people are actually voting. So of course we're going to, we're trying to find out why the voting did not take uh, place as early as was expected. But just to give you a few facts about this area, it has a population. The Kampuji Ward has a population of 201,783 people, and out of those. 90,586 people are registered voters. So, of course, this gives you a picture of how big the crowds are expected here. So, for each ward, you have two polling stations where that will have approximately 10,000 expected voters to turn up. So, given the, that it started a bit late, that might be a problem. But we did speak to some of the um, uh, clerks who have, are now overseeing the, 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 the process as it is. And with us, with us, we have one who's going to introduce herself. Please tell us your name. My name is Florence Chie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm Florence Chie. Yeah, you're a. I'm a super agent. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could just explain to us, we're here really early. Uh, as early as some people came here, as early as four, or five, and uh, voting hadn't started. Could you explain to us what took so long to get this ball rolling? There were some lists that were missing, mm -hmm. but right now the lists are, are here. Mm -hmm. People are voting peacefully. The exercise is going on peacefully. So could you explain to us also, there have been some complaints right here that some people come here and they cannot find their names uh, in, the, in the register and some of these people claim to have been voting in this area for quite a while. Yeah, there were, there were names missing, but it was a register that was missing. We have the register right now. Yeah. They are voting. Yeah. Yeah. So according to you, all everything is everything is okay. Okay. Things are moving okay. So given that you started off a bit late, do you expect that you're going to stick to the timeline? Yeah, yeah. We are going to stick to the timeline. What, what are you doing to ensure that despite the delay, things are going to go we've, according to plan? We've uh, we've added the uh, the clerks. Mm -hmm. We had two clerks. Now we have three. Okay. So we think exercise will will, will end up. At the, the, the time that we expected. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Florence. So there you have it. Things are going on smoothly here at the uh, Kamukunji Ward Shaurimoya Social Hall. Hopefully, the things turn out as uh, has been said by the super agent right here. And I guess we're going to be keeping you updated on what's happening in this two committee in the Kamukunji and uh, Madara, Makadara constituencies. Just to show you what's happening on the ground, we have been to some polling stations where voting has not started even up to now. For example, in Makongeni Primary School that is expect, that is really expected to hold three words as far as the voter turnout is goes. So hopefully you're going to catch up with that by one and just see where has it started, have the aspirants showed up to vote and is there going to be any problems or despite the delays like here, uh, will everything run smoothly? Thank you, Trix, Trix and Gato. They're in the larger polling station in the Kampukunji. 10,000 registered voters there. Much action is expected there. Coming to us live via our pioneer technology using video phone live broadcasting. Uh, you're seeing it fast here on KTN News. So do stand by for that. Let's wind up, gentlemen. And uh, where were we? Sonko yes. and Nairobi. Exactly. Uh, you were saying something. Yeah, I was saying that... Uh, um, he has said, and he has said that uh, Kidero stand a better chance to beat uh, Sonko Kamogast. 
But I'm of this idea that uh, Kidero, as we are talking, is standing on a very shaky ground. First of all, all the forces against the in, uh, against the uh, uh, the 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 incumbents, the incumbency are all working against him. Look at his, his track record. He has been tested and proven that some areas that in some areas that he's not able to deliver. Right now, as we are talking, Ben Nairobi is actually uh, standing on a fifth sort of uh, setup thanks to his inability to uh, work on the issues of Katozu, work on the issues of waste management. We also have the issues of traffic jam, issues of uh, unplanned uh, development, issues of uh, hawkers. And these issues are some of the issues that the middle class and the parochials will be looking into and assess Kidero on that uh, track record. And here is another entrant in the name of Sonko who comes with that record which has not been tested but they are willing to test him on that but again he has also proven himself through other areas where as much as he does not have a kit that he can actually dish out mm -hmm. or he can actually allocate in terms of resources for development he's still going extra mile to do something for the people and that's the kind of uh, mileage that he has had, that he has actually gained that would catapult him, him in beating uh, Kidero but whether he's going to perform better than Kidero Personally, I don't think so because Kidero is, is somebody who ought to have done better than one, what right. Songo will bring on board. But again, the, the issue of the running mate will also uh, come into play. This is what catapulted uh, Waititu to also to, to beat uh, Kabog, Kabogo better, uh, hands down, because he had, uh, he had actually placed a very good uh, strategist, strategist in the name of, uh, is it a Nyiro or Dr. Nyoro. Dr. Nyoro whom people were able to see as much as uh, the, the head is not better than the, the neck, but we have a better situation where, where the pair can work even in a better way. And that's why All right. they were able actually to trust more of uh, the neuro okay. candidate than the... Great point one. there. This mm -hmm. month, uh, Kidero hasn't undergone any nominations. He's campaigning for August. Mm -hmm. So is Sonko now that he has won the ticket. Where do you see the two placed head to head? N number one, in my view, Dr. Kidero has done uh, the bare minimum to remain in office as a, a governor. He's not addressed anything in Nairobi. I mean, sure. the traffic jam, garbage. Right now, if it rains, you will not be able to move out of our town. However, the tragedy in Africa and in Kenya is leaders are not elected to office on merit. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for merit, then Rafael Tuju probably would still be the MP for Rarieda. Kavogo would have won this nomination if you are looking for merit. So most of the time people don't, don't go for merit. And uh, I think the happiest person when uh, Raila Odinga was declared NASA flag bearer <laughs> must have been Kidero. Because now Kidero knows that with the Raila Odinga, he's going to get the entire Lua vote in Nairobi, he's going to get the Luya vote in Nairobi, the Kamba vote, and a few other persons to top up. And anybody who is... Why is he going to get the Kamba vote? Because the, Sonko, I mean, the deputy, Kalozo Msioka, the deputy, Kalozo Msioka, the running mate. But Kalozo Msioka and uh, Mweke. And then also somebody who is talking about a middle class in Nairobi, you're, essentially you're talking about the elite poor because there's no middle class in Nairobi. <laughs> and when we are going to vote, people forget that they're in the middle class, they're professionals. All of a sudden they start speaking their mother tongue. That's when they start speaking Kikuyu <laughs> or Kisi or Kamba. So said the middle, middle class, class as a voting bloc does language. not exist. <clears throat> And I can... Uh, but you're not telling me why Sonko is, go why, uh, Kidero. Kidero is going to win. That's my question. Yeah. Kidero sure. is going to win because Kidero is always underrated. People think that uh, he's, uh, he's a pharmacist, sharp suit, suit like mine, and he doesn't have a grassroots operation. <laughs> However, he's very solid. You even recall during the last election, people dismissed him, said, this fellow is just coming from Mumia, so does he know about politics in Nairobi? But he was able to maneuver his system. And you know, he's got a bank balance, which most of the time does his talking. <laughs> He'll be able to manipulate uh, people in Nairobi. And also, again, we can easily bet on this uh, conversation mm -hmm. that chapter six is going now to become a huge factor in for the gubernatorial election all of a sudden. For, all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Right. Because, because Dr. Kidera has got an interest in Chapter 6. He's right. going to use Chapter 6 to knock, out, issues. Uh, to knock out Sonko, which may have the unintended <coughs> effects of affecting his party leader in Mombasa. All right. Uh, Hezbon, yes. uh, in 2013, that's, that's, those are the only numbers we can work with. Mm. Uh, Raila Odinga uh, beats Uhuru Kenyatta in Nairobi close to 60,000 votes. Is that, is that going to translate into the gubernatorial race between the two, the Jubilee and the ODM candidates? Uh, I think uh, we are going to have uh, a close uh, contest uh, between Kidero and, and, and Sonko. So a reflection of what, what, what Raila got in 2013 is probably going to be a little bit uh, apt 
in 2017 for the simple reason of what, what this matter says, that now we are having the Luya community galvanized under NASA. Uh, we have the Kamba community, you know, in a way within NASA, courtesy of uh, Kalonzo and uh, Jonathan Mweke. And, 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 and of course, uh, Kidero's work is cut out. That the reason why Sonko can beat Kidero is if Kidero does not go out, reach out to these Kenyans we call the middle class. The reason why they are called middle class, I don't know, because in Kenya we have the rich and the poor. So whoever is called the middle class, if Kidero can convince them that this is the difference between... Do they between, have the numbers, though? Yes. The, the issue is not the numbers. There are many. The issue is, do they vote? Because they wake anything. up, you see, they wake up in the morning, they go to the queue, it's too long. They come back to the house, they are thinking, I'll go very Facebook. late, tweet, Facebook. Then at around four, they are called by guys who voted in the morning, you're going mm. for Nyamachoma. They don't vote. And that is the advantage that uh, Sonko has, because his people are actually going to vote. And the reason why I'm saying that Kidero still has an upper hand is he knows that you only have to reach out to these people and make sense to them, that the need to have somebody who will deliver. Kidero has not delivered, you know, but mm -hmm. I cannot bet on Sonko doing any better. Yeah, That's what sure, I cannot. Sure. D don't you, you said something about when, when the powers that be or yeah. when somebody is he seemingly he has all the support this, uh, the, 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 whoever is, is supported by the establishment is likely to be rejected. Exactly. Mm. But now, you see, now I think the advantage that mm. Sonko will have is the fact that now if Jubilee comes on board and campaigns for Sonko, it will not be a contest of somebody supported Jubilee? by the right. power. And those, of course, those are live pictures there on that uh, split screen of the Kibra member of parliament, Ken Okoth, casting his ballot. Uh, in Kibra, that is, of course, uh, Timothy Oteno's camera. They are keeping an eye on things. We did see Eliud Owalo cast his ballot a few minutes uh, ago. That is uh, the main, uh, the incumbent, uh, Ken Okoth, casting his ballot in mm -hmm. Kibra. Uh, we, let's see if we can get Timothy Oteno to talk to uh, the Kibra uh, member of parliament, of course, concerning the voting process and what has been happening. Let's listen in. So you just ask me the same questions, please. Tafadali, in a letter attention up, the longer I spend here, the water does may interfere. Tell me the questions so when I start speaking, I just speak Maramoja and Malise. Uh, so, what's the question? If you are aware of that. Okay. Maswali ndio nikiongea tu naongea mara moja tunamaliza, si ndio? Citizen muko tayari? Eh, tuko. Omera, songesha kichwa kidogo citizen ashike hapo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I just need to get set up. All right. That's uh, the Ken Okoth, the member of parliament for Kibra constituency there after casting his ballot, uh, speaking to the press. Uh, big battle we're expecting there between himself and Eliud Owalo and the other candidate, Martin Odor, their Kibra constituency. Uh, we also have Duncan Hayamba in uh, Kasarani constituency, in Ruaraka constituency, uh, in Babadogo, where there seems uh, to be some kind of fracas. We want to understand what's happening there. Let's now cross live. Uh, to Ruaraka, of course, we shall, we shall be going there at the top of the hour to find out what did happen there. Uh, let's, wind, uh, let's wind up, gentlemen, um, on this issue. Uh, what are we expecting? The, the, the nominations are over. Uh, what are we expecting from the two main political parties and also from the other political parties? Are we going to see any disputes that will have any big effect or impact on, on, on who are going to be the candidates on yeah. the 8th of August. Yeah, on that note, please allow me to make three points. Mm -hmm. Number one, 
we shouldn't be misled to believe that if uh, somebody who doesn't have the infrastructure to be a governor mm -hmm. has got a good running mate, then uh, he may add uh, value. Because the moment a governor is sworn into office, it's at discretion. We know of a number of governors who lock out their deputies, they don't even give them allowances. So the fact that Waititu has got uh, Dr. James Nyora as a running mate, that one shouldn't be so much comfort for the people of Kiambu. Because as soon as Waititu gets sworn in, he can decide to engage in mischief. Now, to cure what he was talking about, I think moving forward, we should have nominations, party nominations on one day for all political parties. It's declared a public holiday. It's done by IBC. So that the so-called middle class in Kenya, who works at Kenya Commercial Bank as a cashier, can actually get uh, time off to go and participate in the party primaries. Because right now what is happening is we are getting uh, people, and for lack of a better word, that people have nothing else to do during the day electing our leadership. And then we start complaining that uh, we don't have leaders like in uh, South Korea who can take us to the next level. Now, for any candidate whose issues is not going to be sorted by the close of business today, he should be licking his wounds and wait for 2022. Brian, what are the lessons that we can learn from this, or Kenyans can learn from this? Very exactly, quickly. exactly. Uh, I think after the end of nominations, we are likely to see now Kenyans turning their attention into issue based, uh, issue issue based on the, the 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 politics and economics of this of this country. Because as you are talking, Ben, you realize that uh, the the development agenda of the country had, had taken a nosedive. People were had, had already shut completely from addressing the key issues affecting the people in right. terms of employment, in terms of uh, the DP growth and all that. All right. Now, this, this, this window will actually be an avenue for Kenyans now to look at issues of what the government has done and what they ought to have done. Right. And these are the, the issues that will now be uh, a judgmental issue between NASA and the Jubilee, where now NASA will be going out to the people and telling them, look, look at this. These are the gaps that are existing. This is what we are going to do. So it will be more of right. issue-based politics as uh, other than the who Thank is you. going to do what. Has born there. nominations over. Mm -hmm. What are the lessons? Nominations learned? over. I think a lot of lessons learned in, in, in basically the processes of, of, of doing nominations. But just like Brian has said, the beauty of this election is that after nominations, most political parties will try and resolve their issues as fast as, fast as possible and focus on issues for the simple reason that in this election, there is nothing emotive. That question that politicians normally ask, what is this election all about, then they ensure that right. the answer mm. is what would give them the best foot forward right. mm. won't work this time. Thank you, Hesbon. Hesbon, Owila, political analysts, uh, all of them are political analysts today. We don't have NASA strategists. <laughs> Jared Okello, uh, cancelled on us. No, he's a nominee. He's a parliamentary yeah. nominee right now. When the party sure. leader calls, he has to show up. All right. <laughs> we we have uh, Brian Montier, Hezbon, mm. Owila, and yeah. um, Dismas Moko. Many thanks for joining us on Sunday edition. That is where we leave it. Remember, our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the ODM nominations here in the capital city county of Nairobi. Capital uh, County number 047 continues all day long. Uh, we have uh, reporters spread across this county to bring you the latest on the ODM nominations here in Nairobi. We have at Orange House, we have our senior uh, senior reporter Rita Tinina in Embakasi. We have Sofia Wanuna and Akisa Wandera in Kamukunji. We have Trix Ingado. Our senior political affairs reporter Duncan Hamba is keeping an eye on things in Kasarani and Waraka. Zinzi Kibiku is in Roy Sambu. Sharon Momani is keeping an eye on things in Westlands, Dagoreti North and Dagoreti South. And we have Timothy Otieno in Langata and Kibra Mark Namaswa in Starehe and Madari. And very shortly, we shall be having Morimi Mwangi coming, out, coming to us live also from Kibra. Many thanks for joining uh, us here on Sunday edition. Uh, stand by for Michelle Ngele with more of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the ODM nominations here in Nairobi at the top of the hour. Bye for now.